Hey everyone and welcome to this little video about this very bass, this Yamaha Attitude Limited 1 bass from 1994. So this is, uh, as you probably can tell, a very special instrument. It's been signed a bunch of times by Mr. Billy Sheehan, who is the guy who designed this bass alongside Yamaha. This bass was not meant to be played and used. This instrument was, uh, in, in a way, intended to be admired and uh, to be sitting on a wall for people to look at and go, wow, look at that. And uh, here is the story of how I got it. So, back in 2007, I moved to Stockholm. I was a young lad, I was about 19 years old when I got here. And uh, I got here with the intention to study history at the university, which I did. Uh, I also played bass. Uh, I had uh, just graduated high school after playing bass there for three years, so that was fun. Uh, and, uh, well, long story short, I have a very bad sense of uh, direction. I can get lost in uh, in this room in a way. So to make things better I decided to roam around Stockholm and get to know the city and get to know uh, where things were and whatnot. And what better way to do that than to set your goal for a music store and head there and uh, you know try to find your way home. And that was exactly what I did. Uh, to get off to a good start there was actually a music store just a few blocks from where I lived. Uh, which was the music store called Four Sound at uh, Folkungagatan, Södermalm, Stockholm. Uh, and the minute that you got into the store, you were greeted by a wall of instruments high up there by the ceiling. They had a bunch of signed guitars, uh, signed by Ingvi Malmsteen, and I think they had a Dimebag guitar and a Damon Stain guitar, and you know, whatnot, and one bass. This very bass guitar, this Yamaha Attitude Limited 1, signed by Mr. Billy Sheehan. This very signature here was the one that was on the bass back then. Uh, and I got into the music store and looked at it, wow, look at that bass. And it had this little sticker on it that says Eti Solu, which means not for sale in Swedish. So you know that uh, you could never ask for someone to take it down and for your greasy fingers to touch it. It was off limits. So I got there and I looked at the instrument and went, wow, that's so, so cool. So uh, anyways, I got around Stockholm, I studied and whatnot, and I played bass. And years flew by and six years later in 2013, I had actually started to pick up on a few of uh, Billy's licks and the tricks. And you know, I had started to develop my three finger technique and everything. Uh, and around that time, lucky for me, Billy actually came to Stockholm to do a clinic uh, in 2013 at Four Sound. And I went there with a buddy of mine named Magnus. Magnus actually has a limited one as well. So he brought it with him to get it signed, I think, if I don't uh, mistake myself. And my Yamaha Attitude Limited 3 was actually at this very clinic and got signed at the headstock. Uh, this was before I bought it. Uh, it was actually the guy who I bought it from who had it with him. And the signature has worn off and yeah, it's not, it's no longer his base, it's my base. Anyways, uh, Billy was there, did his clinic, uh, I got to talk to him, I gave him a CD, a copy of Structural Disorders first album. And I think it was around the time that me and Magnus were supposed to leave, we went by a counter and we saw this bass lying there. And uh, you know, we both had been eyeballing this bass for years, so we couldn't resist, so we picked it up and just played a few notes on it and then snuck it back and like, okay. Don't, don't tell anyone. I actually took a picture of it uh, and posted it on Instagram. Like, I got to touch this bass. <laughs> so anyways, fast forward to 2019 and uh, Billy came back to Stockholm to do another uh, round of clinics around uh, Scandinavia. And he came back to Four Sound. And at this time, uh, my YouTube channel had started to you know, take off, as you probably know. And uh, I actually got invited backstage before the clinic started. You know, I got to get inside, have a cup of coffee and talk to the guys from EBS and everything it was great. Uh, got to talk to Billy uh, while he was warming up and everything. That was a great hang. So uh, they took down this base from the wall to get it signed for a third or fourth time. I'm not quite sure about that. And you know, they plugged it in and they were like, it's still in tune after three years. 
which was amazing. Uh, and they put the base in the green room uh, to have it waiting there for Billy to sign it. Uh, and when they put it there, I was like, can I, can I, can I, can I play it? For just a wee bit? And they were like, sure, go ahead. So I sat there and um, I chatted with uh, Busse from EBS, the, the captain of EBS. Uh, and I sat there playing this wonderful instrument, uh, did some, you know, mental notes comparing it to my own uh, limited three bass um, and I remember like the strings were really old they had never changed the strings and uh, the, some of the frets were sticking out you know uh, the way things uh, end up when a bass is on the wall for 22 years 21 years so uh, anyways Billy did his clinic he signed the bass and it went up on the wall again and I thought, well, that was cool. I got to play the bass. I took a picture of it and posted it on Instagram. Like, I got to play the bass for a few minutes. That was so cool. Um, and uh, just, I think like two months after this, or maybe one month even, uh, I got a text from Basse, who works, who worked at Four Sound. Uh, and he, said, he was like, hey buddy, uh, as you probably know, uh, Four Sound is going out of business. And this was a huge blow because Four Sound had a lot of stores around Sweden. So they were going out of business and they had all of these wonderful sign instruments up there on the wall. And I'm ever so grateful for getting this text. Uh, Basse told me like, well, uh, as you know, we're going out of business and we have this Yamaha Attitude Limited One Bass sitting here and I thought of you and uh, I want you to buy it if you if you can So I asked for a price and I just couldn't say no to what he Offered me to buy it for uh, so I, I went uh, went quickly and talked to my wife I was like, you know that bass that was on the wall that's been on the wall for 12 years or so like oh I, I get to buy it for a really good price and she uh, Bless her heart was like yeah go yes go <laughs> You stupid boy, go and get it. So I went with my empty gig bag and got home with this bass. Uh, and that was a mind-blowing moment. And I, you know, I got home, plugged it in, everything worked. There were some, you know, some scratches from the pots, but that's to be expected. Uh, when I plugged it in and, you know, I tr started playing it, I used a hip shot. I, you know, as you, as you do, you drop it down to low T. Uh, and I, I remember hitting the hip shot and the strings didn't move and at first I thought oh man the hip shot needs to be greased up or something uh, but lo and behold it was actually the strings uh, the strings were at that time around uh, approximately 24 years old or something like that this bass was made in 1994 I think these were the factory strings that's actually 25 years so the strings were 25 years old at the time so no wonder they had no tension left in them but i put on a new set of rotor sounds and the hip shot worked uh, like a charm uh, i brought this bass to my buddy peter uh, who works at ebs as well and he filed the frets fret ends there were some sharp ends up here by you know the the widdly widdly area he filed those frets down we did some um, you know there were no needs for neck adjustments with, which were you know amazing uh, we went through like the spray the pots we cleaned it up and you know it's it's a great base i covered all of the signatures with uh, clear vinyl so they won't you know rub off when i play this bass because that's my intention with this bass i want to play it i don't want to hang it on a wall considering it's a great instrument and it deserves to be played uh, I know some guys would probably just put it up there and just look at it and uh, that breaks my heart because this is such a great bass with uh, with a great tone and uh, I just want to, you know, I want to play it and I want it to be played because it deserves to be played. So considering this bass had been sitting on a wall for all of these years, I'm amazed with how well it worked when I got to take it home and everything. It's a bit different bass from my limited three bass. It's a bit brighter in the, in the tone. I think that's due to the metal tongue on the end of the neck here. That's underneath the pick guard and everything. Uh, it gives it a bit more bite to the tone. I've been using it a lot with uh, the videos I've been doing for Glenn Fricker of Spectre Sound Studios. Uh, it really has that nice metal growl. I used this bass on the last structural disorder tune that we will hopefully be releasing 
uh, well pretty soon actually so uh, stay tuned for that and, and it's a great metal base it has a bit more you know uh, brightness to it like I said and getting the chance to buy this base was amazing I mean I had been looking at this base for 12 years when I got the text and the, you know I never expected to have this base at home when I moved to Stockholm in 2007 I never even expected to get the chance to play it but here we are so that's the story of how I got this base so uh, like you heard in the intro here is through my uh, helix presets <laughs> So all clean, here's just the P pickup. And now just a woofer, I increased the volume on the SSL now, so. Tom cut. Tone rolled off. and tone rolled off and tone cut. So that's the story behind this bass, a bass that I never thought I would own uh, nor play, you know, and now it's standing here waiting for me to pick it up every day. That's wonderful. So that's the story about the Yamaha Attitude Limited 1 that I've got here in my lap. So I hope you enjoyed this little video of mine. Make sure to subscribe, hit that bell and all of that good stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care now. Bye.